The Ask Diamond Show presents a world for me. For me. A world for me. Right about now, you're tuned into the Ass Diamond Show. I be the Lord Finesse, a.k.a. the Underboss D.I.T.C. So keep it tuned right here. One, two, three, four, get it! Uh, a world, world, world for me. I'm better on the mic, find an ace up my sleeve Never on the dice, pushing a 2002 if you shout was dead Sitting on 110 if you count me spare See ya, out your mind, trying to face the guard Your rhyme is like an empty prison, a waste of bars No time flat, see I scrape the squad We don't act for shit, we just take what's off Got the skills of titanium, straight to the cranium Try to play me in, we could go to war like Iranians The deep cat, I speak rap As long as the beat fat, I shit'll be off the beat rap Lord finesse, don't harass the guards with four bars this on like half the squad, sort of savage. I don't gave bash, I slaughter faggots. You yeah. niggas playing Russian roulette with automatic. Yeah. See, on the street, you're on top of rank. Three words when I get the dice, stop the bang. Bet against me, yo, you get your cash took. And even my street team promote nothing but ass yeah. hookers. How can you win in this world so cool? When you learn the game, niggas change the rules. You gotta keep cool, get down and make moves. Yeah. Show and prove in this land with cash yeah. rules. If money makes the world go round, so be it. I've been broke before, ain't trying to repeat it. If you're playing Ain't talking about grams, I don't need it. Your vision ain't picture and cream, can't see it. The Ass Diamond Show. This is a diamond exclusive. What's good? This your girl Diamond. This is the Ass Diamond Show, and today I'm welcoming one of my good friends, a pioneer DJ, hot producer, freestyle master, all the way from the BX, baby. It's the funky technician, Lord Finesse. What's up, Finesse? How you doing today? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I can't complain. Life is decent. Making the best out of it. Well, that's always good to hear because, you know, I do keep track of your parties and more so your career. I see you still doing your thing. A lot of stuff overseas. Tell me how that's going. Well, as far as overseas, I mean, that market's been there since 91, you know, so I've been all over, whether it be Europe, Japan, Australia, those markets are wide open for, for real hip hop, things of that nature. It's, it's still the 90s yeah, in a good way because, you know, they listen to all the commercial stuff that's coming out. They more have a thing for the 90s and that golden era, so I'm blessed to be a part of that whole generation right there. Okay, now you and I, we go way back and i remember when i first saw you performing and i'm like who is this kid he's a dj he can really spit on the freestyle it was just sick how did you even get into this game and, and when was it well man where do we begin i fell in love with hip-hop since i was man but when i hit hit teens you know it was just something that that was real fascinating to me and i was definitely infatuated by the whole hip-hop movement it was something that i wanted to be a part of that i felt that you didn't have to dress a certain way you didn't have to be a part of a gang it was just something positive and it all pertained to music and being able to entertain the crowd so i like the whole aspect of that and i went for it i mean i wanted to be a dj first but I had a DJ and he wanted me to be a rapper. So went into the rap world like that. And I was always an entertainer regardless. I think rap is a form of, it could be jokes, it could be messages, all mixed in like a melodic pattern that rhymes, you know? So if you was raised in an urban community and you snap and you joke all the time, I mean, that definitely translates into you being a rapper be a part of your nature and part of your character when you get up on stage so that part was always easy for me being able to get up on the stage and have fun with it i took dj and up after i became established as a rapper i got back into it and went heavy with that and even got into the realm of producing and still doing a lot of great things that channel, that, that realm. Now I know you have worked with a lot of artists like Fat Joe, Kid Capri, the late Big Pun, MC Light, Doo-Wop, KRS-One, the list just goes on. If you had to pick a favorite out of those people, who would you say was your favorite person to get in the studio with? That would be Big L and Notorious Big, because they both remind me of each other. 
God bless, they both passed away. They both was fun, fun to work with. Always cracking jokes. That was the fun part about it. It's like they said, if you had a job that you love, you'd never work again. Well, I guess half the time, I was never working around these dudes, you know, because I truly loved working with them. And what they brought to the studio, because they could joke, they could gamble, whatever. But when it was time for them to work and go in the booth and do their songs, man, just understood why they were so great at what they did and then of course being a rapper and respecting the craft such as i do it was that's why it was special for me was to, to see that struggle and the grind that they put in to make the magic that they created in the studio for me to be there that's like historic to me being that we come from the era when hip hop was hip hop and MCs were really conscious of what they were spitting, where do you feel that the hip hop game is right now? Well, the era we came up in, it's funny that you say that because I think our parents were calling it noise. What I can say the difference between our generation and this generation is you had to compete against your peers. I mean, it goes on, there were so many different categories different ways to go in hip hop and everybody pride themselves on putting out good music and like right now different categories one they don't exist you either have commercial you have underground definite infatuation of putting out great music and lyrical content this generation is more passionate about making money and they don't care what type of music they have to do to make money so a lot of these artists don't have identities because they're chasing after money they're not looking to contribute to the art that just happens to happen well that's all good said but that's not what they're really chasing it's like how can i make this money oh i gotta do a record like that okay i'll do a record like that i think hip-hop lacks a lot of leadership but you got some of the great icons and legends and moguls from our generation trying to be young and it's hard to set a precedent when you try to impress children, when you're looking for the approval of a kid to tell you you're hot and you're not bracing what your experiences are and what you gain from growing up in the game of hip hop, you're still trying to be young. When you're older now, you gotta embrace being wiser and more mature. Learn from a lot of things that we did wrong back in those days and move forward. Like, long story short, I had Al Green and Marvin Gaye worrying about new additions. They just stayed with an eight Graphic. It's a lot of demographics out there that appreciate real music. It's just not being touched on. Wow, you are absolutely correct about all of that. I don't know where we're going now with the music, but what I want to share with my listeners is that you played a major role in my career and in what I'm actually doing now. And I don't know if I've even ever told you that because we don't talk enough anymore. I'm in the career path I'm in now because way back in the day, I've been in the studio with you. I've done a few videos with you. And that's what actually helped me say, you know, maybe this is what I want to do be and this is what I want to do and so I'm saying thank you publicly for being a part of my life at a time when I wasn't sure what I wanted to do and watching you you've always been such a huge inspiration because you still in this game after all these years still surviving still eating that's a beautiful thing so on that note what would you tell some of these young artists that are out now trying to make it what do they need to do so that they can actually be in the game half as long as you have been i think one of the things that i i would tell well understand what you're what you're chasing after in life definitely understand what you're chasing after in life and it's a grind and when you get into something have a plan have a plan of what's going to set you apart damn there are more artists than there are consumers at this rate you know it's like nobody wants to be a doctor or electrical engineer no more everybody figures way to go is being either a rapper or an athlete because they see these magazines they see television they see reality shows they looking at a way to get it and get it easy and i'm letting you know it's not going to be an easy run what it's going to be is this hustle is having a plan understanding how to meet deadlines knowing what you can contribute to the game that's not being put there right now the game is oversaturated so you have to look for an original route to take to 
what you're doing. Because you can easily look at, which most people do, they look at rappers and go, oh, wow, he's doing that. I, I can do that too. Oh, that was doing simple rhymes. I can do that too. But, I mean, if the person is already out there and they established with whatever they coming out with, you got to understand that's number one. If you plan to do what they do, your craft and yourself basically be number two. Because you want to do the same thing they're doing, but they're already established set forth an audience for what they got out there. So for you to do exactly what they're doing, you're number two, and you're basically gonna be happy with eating the scraps, the leftover fans that they leave for you. That's all you're gonna get, scraps. So my thing is be original. Think of something and, and run with it. It's always gonna be a grind. You ain't ready for a grind, you think it's gonna come easy, then I advise you don't even get in this music game because this generation, this age right now is the age of a hustler. Everything is about hustling. And if you ain't really ready to go in there and roll up your sleeves and put that work in and really hustle, not only will you not make it in this music game, you won't make it anywhere in life right now. The Ask Diamond Show. Wow, that's deep, but I love it. And that's how you've always been for as long as I've known you. You've always been right to the point. You've been deep. You've been on top of everything that's going on. So I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be on the Ask Diamond Show. Where are you headed next? Well, right now, I'm basically working on a finesse project it's called The Underboard. It's due out in fall. So I really cut a lot of traveling down really trying to just boggle down and get this done up. We've been planning this since last year. A lot of pieces are in place and building the right team, the right mark, and the right motion. It's a lot. It's work, like I said. My, my sleeve's been rolled up since like last summer. Yeah, it's great. I done did the photo shoot for the cover. I got a lot of features. I don't want to talk about them yet, but it won't be like a compilation album. I know some people have like compilation albums with all the features, but it's just mainly icons for my generation I respect. I'm not reaching, oh, this person is popular, so I'm gonna grab this person. I just want to do good music and work with artists I respect. So that's the Underboss project that'll be coming out like fall this year. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Congrats on that. Now, can you tell people where they can find you, stay tuned to your schedule, see what upcoming events you have, and listen to some of your music? Oh, wow. Facebook one thing to keep up with the current events. I always try to update it and whatever I'm doing and I try to put it on Facebook. I have a fan page and I have well, a personal page. Catch me on Twitter. Same thing. I'm looking to book me. Whether it be DJ or performing Twitter or you can catch me at the underboss at ymail.com. That's how you reach out to me. That's not for you to send no songs or fan music. Nah, I don't need that right now. We passed that stage. I'll be looking for artists in the future, but nowhere near right now. Well, last what's up. Want to thank you for joining me on the Ask Diamond Show. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Looking forward to catching up with you somewhere in the VX or somewhere, wherever you travel, and I'm going to try to get there. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. We're going to catch up. We'll get out and talk about old times. That's right, looking forward to it. Gotta thank my man, Lord Finesse, the funky technician. Make sure you check out his music and his event schedule. I'll keep you posted. That's the way it goes down. It's a wrap for me. I'll holla. The Ass Diamond Show. Ass Diamond Show. Right about now. This is a Diamond Life production. I be the Lord Finesse, a.k.a. the Underboss, D-I-T-C.